All right guys, so I'm here with Joseph, the president of Sam Park in New York. What we want to do today is go over a couple things that will either help make or break your next look. Joseph? Good to see you, Susan. All good. All right, so when it comes to suits, I think the most important thing is the fit. It doesn't matter how expensive the suit is or how cheap it is. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't matter. 100%. I tell my clients all the time, if you have a polyester fabric suit, but it fits you really well, you look like a million bucks, no one would know. If you have a Zenia fabric, really nice fabric, but it doesn't fit you, you look like a schlop. Fit is king. All right, so Joseph, you said fit is king. How should your suit jacket fit you? Let's start with the shoulders. Shoulders, what I see most common is that people's shoulders are too wide, which makes it look like you're wearing your big brother's suit. The way it should be is that your muscle, your shoulder muscle should stick beyond your shoulder pad. One way to do this, go up to a wall, put your shoulder up against it. If your muscle hits before the shoulder pad, it should fit you good. Now, when you're deciding how your suit should fit you and how tight it should be, a good thing I like to do is to put two fingers in between where your button is and your stomach. If you're able to put two fingers in between that space, one, you know it's not too tight, and two, you know it's not too loose. Now, be careful not to make it too tight. A good way to tell if the jacket is too tight is when you button it up, it will leave an X mark or X pattern showing how tight the jacket is squeezing your body. Too tight is also too bad. When it comes to sleeves, you want it to taper down as you move down the arm. You want it to flow with the contour of the arm so it'll be thicker by the bicep, a little bit tighter by the forearm. Now, when we're talking about length of the jacket, it's more common to see jackets that are a lot shorter now, but rule of thumb, you always want the length of your jacket to cover your butt. You don't want it too long, you don't want it too short, but you definitely want it to cover your butt. What I tell people, my clients all the time, a general rule, a trick you can use is that your jacket should come between your wrist and mid knuckle of your thumb. Obviously, some people have longer arms, shorter arms, or you might want your jacket a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, but that's a general rule. Now, this is gonna be biased because yes, this is a custom made Sam Parker suit, but what can you tell us about the fit of my suit, Joseph? What do we have going on here? No, let's, let's start with the shoulders. Perfection. What I see by the shoulders, same thing. Like I described, the shoulder muscle is visible beyond the shoulder pad. The same thing, if you look at his arm, you can see his bicep, you can see his forearm. It creates the image of the arm the way it should be. Now, what if I button it up, Joseph? Same thing. You see that the chest sticks out. Do we have it that comes two in. button, two it's not, space? It's not pulling tight. You have a little room to put your finger in there. Length? Perfect. It covers his bottom. He has a double vent over here. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. And it comes down a perfect length, it's professional. Now the next thing we wanna get into is the lapel. When you're talking about the lapel, you typically have three types. You have what's called a peak lapel, a notch lapel, and a shawl lapel. Yeah, Caesar right now is wearing a peak lapel. I'm wearing a notch lapel. A shawl lapel you might have seen as more of a round lapel. It's most commonly used for more of like a formal tuxedo type of jacket. Also, with the peak lapel, it's usually more formal. Uh, you usually see it on tuxedos, whereas with the notch. A notch lapel is gonna be more professional, casual. You'll see the president wearing a notch lapel on a Monday afternoon, but in an evening occasion, he'll probably be wearing a peak. However, these days, people like to mix and match. It really comes down to your confidence. You can wear a peak during the week. You can wear a shawl casual. You can mix and match. Now, personally, what I would recommend, especially being that I'm a lawyer, typically what you'll see me in in the courthouse is a notch lapel. It's a little bit more professional, but it could also be class uh, casual too. It depends how you dress it up. One of the most distinguishing features of a suit is the shoulder style. We're gonna discuss three today. Number one is a normal shoulder style. That's what I'm wearing here today. That's what Caesar's wearing as well. Number two, one of my favorite, is the rope shoulder which means that it comes up a little bit and comes down. You'll see that more by James Bond, he wears that. It brings some attention to the shoulder, more athletic. And if a person has slight shoulders, very slim, it could be a good idea to wear rope shoulders. 
The third, my most favorite, the Neapolitan shoulder. The Neapolitan shoulder has some pleats going over here and you do that by making the arm a little bit bigger than the sleeve hole and this is something that you're not going to see so much in a store. This is going to be more of a custom bespoke option. And that is exactly why I like it the most, the Neapolitan. There's something about it that just stands out. One, like Joseph said, you don't really see it a lot, but two, it's just different. It looks exclusive. It looks elegant. You know, when you see the little ripples and it all bunches up right here, it sets you apart. But again, it's situational. If I'm trying to stand out more or add a little bit more flair to my suit, I'll typically get a Neapolitan. However, if I want something that makes me stronger, that gives me that really physical manly look, I'm gonna go with the rope shoulder. It makes my shoulders look more broad, it makes me look more strong, at least I believe so, and the suit speaks for itself. So those are typically my two favorite type of shoulders. It's Neapolitan. Not Neapolitan? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was so good! Next, let's get into the sleeves. Typically you have two types of sleeves. You have your functional and your non-functional. Now the highest end suits you'll see will typically have a functional sleeve, also called a surgeon's cuff. Yeah, there was a time when it was considered disrespectful for a man to take off his jacket in public. So when you had a surgeon who would rush onto a battlefield and have to help somebody, they would roll up their sleeves. So they came up with functional buttons where you can actually roll up, get to work, but still look put together. Well, I did not know that was how they came up with that name. Now you know. But if I'm to recommend anything to you, what I would recommend, again, something that makes you stand out. You know, a suit really says a lot about the person wearing it. And there's nothing like having a functional sleeve as Joseph just showed you. So again, if I'm to recommend anything, definitely go with a functional sleeve. When it comes to jacket style, there's really two basic styles. Single breast and double breast. Single breast is, breast is what I'm wearing right now. Double breast was created more to keep you warm. You have that extra fabric to keep you warm in the winter. It was also used for riding horses. Also, where you have wind coming at you, double breast keeps you put together. Now, when it comes to jacket style, you could never go wrong. It doesn't matter the situation or occasion. You could never go wrong with a single breasted suit with two buttons. Now, you can have three buttons, but rule of thumb, remember this. Never, under any circumstance, Button the bottom button. I don't care. Single breasted, double breasted, I don't care. Rule of thumb, never, ever, ever, ever button the bottom button. But again, if I'm going to recommend something, it would definitely be single breasted with two buttons. Why? Because it's versatile, classy, and still powerful and strong. Next, let's get into the different type of vents that a suit has. Typically, you have three type of vents. No vent, single vent, and a double vent. I usually suggest to my clients to go for a double vent because that way when you sit down, it's still covering your bottom. If you got a single vent, it's tend to, to split in the middle, especially when you're sitting down or if you have a big bottom. However, if you're skinny, you can get away with it and it's a good look too. Personally, I like for almost any suit, unless it's a tux, I like the double vent. That's what I have on now. That's usually always what I get and that's what I'll recommend. But again, sometimes you might want to push the limits. So usually for my tuxedos, I'll do a little single vent, you know, to set myself apart, make it look different, but provided it's still enough to cover my butt. Now, when you get into pants, just like with the jacket, fit is king, fit is everything. It's not uncommon to see suit pants without belt loops. Why is this? Because perfectly made suits and good suits should fit perfectly. You shouldn't need belt loops for your suit to fit or your pant to fit perfectly. It should already come almost perfect. And that's why you typically see what we call side adjustments. So if you gain or lose some weight, you could easily adjust the waist of your pants so it still fits perfectly. One of the other differences between a custom pant and an off the rack pant is that a custom pant, your tailor is going to be measuring every area of your leg. Whereas uh, off the rack pant, you have one size and then you got to figure it out. So typically speaking, when I measure one of my clients, we'll measure the waist, the hips, the thighs, the knees, the calf, the cuff, the crotch, the length. There's so many little details. You'll never find that in an off the rack suit. That's one of the big differences. But even if you get it off the rack, you can take it to your local tailor. You can have it tapered down. Always keep in mind, however much money you spend in the store, add on a little bit for the tailor. Now, what's also very important is the length of your pants, okay? So you typically have what we call no break, which happens to be my favorite. It sits almost perfectly right on top of the shoe. 
You also what's called you have what's called a half break, which it falls on top of the shoe, and then you have what you see usually older men wear, unfortunately, a heavy break. And that's usually when you tend to see your pants crumpled all the way up and bagging on top of each other. We do not want this. If I'm to recommend anything, it would be a slight break. You want your pants to perfectly sit on the top of your shoe. Tell them about the crop break. Crop is really interesting. Why? Because we tend to see younger people who love to show their ankles a lot and want their pants, the length, to sit a little higher up. So with a crop break, it really allows you to show, if you want to wear socks, your socks. You want to show your ankle, your ankle. And speaking of that, this is also very important too. Don't be afraid to show your ankle. Don't be afraid not to wear socks or to wear low cutting socks that you can't see. Okay? Rule of thumb is that whenever you're wearing lace shoes, let me repeat myself. If you were wearing lace shoes, you need to wear socks. But if you're wearing loafers, something like what I have on today, it is okay to go with the no-show socks or no socks at all. That's completely fine. Okay. All right, here we go. The do's and don'ts, my favorite part, all right? Now, again, keep in mind, a lot of this is personal preference, but they're just some things that you can't do. Number one, I know your parents or grandparents or whoever might be old-fashioned, but please, for the love of God, don't get pleats in your pants. We don't do that anymore. It's 2020, they're not coming back, even though he thinks they're coming back. They're not coming back, please don't get pleats. Number one. Number two, I see this far too often. People try to do too much. The suit is also supposed to be classy, okay? When you're wearing a lapel pin, wear a lapel pin. When you're wearing a pocket square, wear a pocket square. Please don't try to do both. It's too much, it's too much going on. Not only does it take away from the suit, but it takes away from each other. Next thing you see all the time when people are wearing ties, too long, too short. How are you supposed to wear a tie? It should somehow come to cover right until your waistband, not too long, never too short. Another thing, sleeve length. You typically want your sleeve to stick out around a quarter inch, a half an inch at most, not too much. I don't think you should go with zero unless you're going with the t-shirt. One correction though, I would never, ever, ever put pleats on my pants. <laughs> what happens in 10 years from now, we'll have to see. Styles always cycle. Right. Next, number five. This is probably the most annoying one for me personally. I want the best for you, okay? Your suit is supposed to be classy. Please stop wearing your Apple Watch and smart watches with your suit. They don't go together. Something that you can wear in the gym, you can't be wearing with your nice custom made or even your uh, men's warehouse suit. It takes away from the suit. If it doesn't tick tock, don't wear it, okay? Last but not least. I already said this before and I'm gonna say it again. Matter of fact, I'm gonna end the do's and don'ts with this. Under no circumstance are you ever, 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 ever supposed to button the bottom button. Doesn't matter if it's double breast, single breast, four breasts, I don't care. Even if you have three buttons, under no circumstance, do not button the bottom button. All right guys, so those are some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to wearing a suit and some of the tips that we think will best help you get that perfect look and that perfect fit. When it comes to wardrobe, people- Justin, Justin, <laughs> how about we just create a suit? Let's do it. Come on.